Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's Independent Media Production. Today we're talking about Tom Rezzo heads. Very specific thing about Tom Rezzo heads, the extremes of them. We're talking about what happens when you go super high, super low, and what we want to aim for. Now, first things first, rezzo head, we're talking about the head on the bottom of the drum away from you, the one that you're not hitting. Sometimes they call it, you know, the bottom head. There's, there's, there's names. I call it the rezzo head because it really contributes a lot to the resonance of the drum. Makes sense to me. What we want to talk about today here is that there are situations where you might not realize that the issue you're having is specific to the rezzo head. And it could be a matter of age or being worn out or that it's brand new or a range thing. But today we're talking specifically about tuning intervals and basically that like the the tuning of that head can ruin the sound of the drum or at the very least make you not have a very good gig. We outfitted the toms on the Pearl Kit today with clear G1s on the top and the bottom because these are basically the cleanest, clearest, simplest possible thing we could put on here. So anything that's going on in the drum, we're gonna know about it. If there was coding on there or any other kind of extra business going on, it could be contributing to that stuff and confusing the situation. So we're going for basically like the most clinical setup we possibly could. And then I went ahead and tuned the batters to the range that I like. They're about a fifth apart intervallically, the batters themselves between the two drums. And we're not gonna touch those today. They're staying put, so everything you hear in the demos today is going to be just changes to the resonant heads. First, let's hear what it sounds like at what I think of as optimal tuning for this range. So they sound basically like they normally sound when we use them in the studio here. Um, we're dealing with the batters tuned to feel and to sound, just like pitch-wise for what I would like to hear. And then I tuned the rezos about a minor third intervallically higher, basically the difference between like an A up to a C or something like that. And this for me gives the right balance of attack and tone and dynamics. I can get basically everything that I want out of them. Depending on the heads I use, it might change a little bit, but this is generally where I put things. Now when we dive into the sounds you're gonna hear where we mess with this interval, um, I know for sure that a younger version of myself or a, a, a myself with a little less experience would have immediately reached for some kind of muffling. We're not gonna do any muffling today. I wanna just show you that this sound, which to me doesn't really need any muffling, is wide open and it's because of the intervals between the heads. First, I wanna hear what happens when the rezo is too low. Gonna basically not shoot for a specific note or interval. I'm gonna go as low as I can where I can still get a pitch out of the head, basically. So it's not flopping around, it's not finger tight, but it's as low as it possibly can be and still resonate.
Where I ended up is about a fourth below the batters on both of these, more or less. So that's a really dramatic jump from where we were before. It's very, very, very low. And when you hear it in that demo, some of that racket and, and sort of like chatter that you hear in the decay is actually the Rezo heads flopping around. So what we've done sort of is like inverted the way that they're behaving. We have the tighter one on top and the looser one on bottom. And our tone's kind of gone. Everything is slowed down. The Rezo's moving slower. So the whole behavior of the drum is slower. The shell's not really getting activated. It's definitely not throwing tone very far at all. Listening to it in the room, we were like, it almost sounds like concert toms, or like there is no bottom head on there. I've heard people then put tape on the bottoms of the drums to try to fix this, put tape on the top, moon gels, all kinds of things. This is just because the rezo's too low. These are brand new heads, they're not damaged, they haven't been messed with really at all, we just put them on here. So now you know that if that's what you're hearing, not enough tone, frustrations there, check the bottom, see if they're too low. Now the other extreme is the one that I run into on backline kits a lot and also in studios, which is the batter heads look fine, they've been used, but they're sort of in a reasonable range. I hit them and I go, oh boy, those don't sound good. And look under the drum and the rezo heads are real tight. This, when I talk to people who like a high rezo head, but then a normal sort of medium range batter head, they tend to tell me that what they're after is a faster sound, a quicker sound, more articulation, um, less overtones. It's all in furtherance of a good sound, basically, but the main thing being that they want the drum to respond quickly. Now, raising the rezo head will do this. I mean, that's part of what happens when you raise it, but there's a threshold you reach where it can't actually give you back anything because the intervals between the two heads, is too wide, they can't talk to each other. So this is basically a situation where the drum can't resonate for the opposite reason as the last. Now in a drum that's tuned optimally for a good sound, there's reflections going on off of the inside of the shell between the heads and things like that. But when we get to this kind of tension, we're basically dealing with a closed tube and we're getting way too much reflection off the bottom head, but not really any resonance. With the batter head tuned out of sort of medium pitch like this, we can't actually make that bottom head move at all because the frequencies are so far from each other. Um, they can't really have much of a conversation and work together to make the drum itself actually resonate and throw tone and, and maybe a note um, out into the room or the mics even at all. And when you run into choking drums in these sort of different ways, um, you can sometimes still have a good close mic sound. But for sure, just getting like five feet away, it just dies. Some of these situations that I'm doing here don't sound that radical where I'm sitting. But as soon as you get a little ways away or even into like an overhead mic, it's, it's immediately gone. And then, you know, start breaking out the tape, start messing around. And not even considering that that side of the drum that we never hit and don't think about that much is responsible for an enormous, I mean, at least 50% of the sound of everything else. Now, bringing the rezo back down to a reasonable, <laughs> I say reasonable, a, a medium tension somewhere that's in the realm of the batter is gonna give us the opportunity to actually get resonance out of the drum. There are certain tunings and certain drums and situations where the sound you're hearing is really just the heads. For us, especially those of us who have drums that we like, that we've had for a long time, that we you know, maybe spent a lot of money on, um, we, we want to use the drum. We don't just want to hear the sound of you know, a, a few tens of dollars worth of drum heads. So when we come back down, we're going to get back into that range where the batter, the rezo, and the shell are working together to make a beautiful sound. For me, you know, I, I think that a, a good place to start is to just tune them the same and then just bring the rezo up a tiny bit as you go and find the optimal spot for your drums.
full disclaimer, disclosure, all that. Higher reso than batter, lower reso than batter, both totally acceptable. Both make great sounds, depending on the sound that you're going for. This isn't about whether it should be higher or lower or the same. This is about understanding that there are limits based on the pitch of the batter head. If we were dealing with a much higher tuning on the batters, this whole range with the resos would move. And likewise, if the batters were super low, it would move down because we're not trying to just say this is the right tension for the reso. This is the right tension for the batter. They work together and they move. So if I was going for a jazz tuning, I might tune the resos a little lower and the whole thing tuned up a lot from where they are. But the bottom line is you have to understand that there's a range for every drum, there's a range for every head, and you want to work within the constraints of just the physics of that instrument and make sure that you're not going too extreme to the point where you're not getting what you can get out of the drum. So when you find yourself in a scenario where someone's retuned your drums and you want to get them back or you're using a backline kit and crazy things are coming out of them when you hit them, maybe you've just traveled and they've changed pitch. Maybe you used, you know, calfskin heads or something like that and the, and the weather affects them. Basically what I want you to take from, away from this is that muffling is not the first place to go. The first place to go in my opinion is to tune the batters to feel good and to overall in the range of the pitch that you like then tune the resos the same, maybe slightly higher, maybe slightly lower, but generally in the same vicinity and see if you're gonna get out of the drum at that point what you're looking for. Extremes are not super helpful, I find, with tuning, um, especially for more traditional sounds like you're hearing here. Um, and similarly, muffling is the last place that I go, unless I'm going for an almost like synthetic kind of sound. A little bit of tape maybe in a recording situation, but I go as far as I can with the tuning and the head choice before I start to add mass to the batter. It's also worth noting that choosing the right heads for the situation that you're in is going to affect all of this too. If we were using coated batters, or if the batters were two-ply, or if there were hydraulics going on here, or if we were using a different sort of you know, a rezo head, all of these things affect these ranges and these intervals and everything too. So making sure that when you study this stuff and when you go into the experimentation that you understand how the heads you're using should normally work is going to help you figure out what they can do for you. You know, there was a little experimentation for me today because I don't normally play clear G1s on the top and the bottom. So I messed around with them a little bit to just kind of get a sense of them. You know, it's, it's almost like sitting down at a new instrument when you're checking out totally new heads in a combination you've never used and trying to get a good sound. All right, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and click the notification bell below so you hear about all of the new videos coming out of the studio here, particularly over on the Patreon. A lot of extra stuff over there, playing demos, anecdotes, chatter. <laughs> um, please follow the link below to that as well. See if there's a tier that works for you, help keep us going here. Um, they really are supporting us through these wild times that we're in, and we cannot express enough our appreciation for that. In conjunction with me wanting to know about your time intervals, because I super do, um, don't forget that when you're experimenting with these things it really is in furtherance of a sound so if you maybe hear me say that the rezo is a minor third higher and you do that and it doesn't sound good on your drum that's okay all the drums are different make sure you're going after a sound that makes you happy and experiment until you get it and once you get it reverse engineer it a little bit make sure that you can make it again because at the end of the day this is all about getting there fast so we just we can get down to the business of making music Music